Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, CJ Stroud, first ever pro experience. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So before we dive into the video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. If you're thinking about becoming a patron, get over there, join, become a member. Never been cheaper. There will never be more content than there will be this fall over there. Very excited to share long form, deep, detailed, nuanced takes on all things quarterback and offense. So get over there, check it out. I appreciate it. As for this video, let's get into it. C.J. Stroud, first preseason action. It was rough. Film actually makes it, I think, a little worse. Not usually a good trait. Right out the gate here, what I'm used to calling all stick, two by two, just quick outs on the outside, cloud adjust quick outs with stick inside. You pick a side, you usually read this thing outside in. His footwork right here, to me, funky. One, two, three, no, uh, uh, uh. It looks like he goes right, outside, inside, outside, all over the place, in my opinion. Now, if you are a fan of this channel, First of all, I appreciate it. Second of all, you're probably going to know that I am not a huge fan of quick outs. Okay. Now, condensed formation, this thing has been popular in the league for a while. It's not my favorite, and I think it puts a lot of stress on a quarterback because you have to be able to see these outside guys. Yes, it's not as far of a throw with the condensed split, but you just get this kind of like, it's always muddy for me. It, it just, there are easier throws, in my opinion, to get us started than this read. And so the read is usually quick out, stick, okay? And it's mirrored on both sides. So you got quick out, stick. And when I say cloud adjust, that just means if we were to get a rolled up corner on either side, we would then be able to get this thing turns into a must outside release fade. So really, you you know, you can maybe rip the whole shot, but you're really trying to work this first middle field open. But it sure looks like, you be the judge here, it looks like when he hits the back of his drop that he is looking this way, and then the timing of it is weird. It's almost like he goes here, then outside, and that's why he's so far to the sideline. Normally, you want to read this thing one to two, and that's it. I don't know if I've ever seen someone go one, two, three here. So it just felt all over the place, kind of like the performance, if I'm being honest. So just being able to kind of sort through, this is the first play. What the hell is going on? Right? What? Eh, eh, eh. I mean, you you be the judge, right? Like he doesn't hit his back foot and throw it out there. One, two, three. Uh, uh, uh. He goes one, two, three, I think. And so one, two, three, good on you if you can do it. I think it's really tough. And I think maybe he's just looking off with the drop to the right, but then for him to go, one in out. I mean, right? Like, look at his look at his body. Outside, no. Inside, no. Outside, yes. Normally, you'd go outside, inside, check down. And again, we've got pass pro issues all day. Don't get it started. I understand that. But just the first play, funky. Next one here, tough. So we get a sack. I'm not a huge fan of this design. So the first thing here, obviously, the pass protection and issue, who's in there at tackle, who the hell knows. Okay, all acknowledging all that stuff. But this is a seven-step drop? Why are we calling seven-step drops like this if this is an issue? Like, I get it. He has no chance here. And, okay, so the first part that I dislike is the seven-step drop. Okay, We can all kind of acknowledge the fact that this is not 2004. We don't need to be doing this. Seven step drops. Now, is it supposed to be a seven step drop? I don't know. It looks a little funky at the back for me. And if that's his normal seven step drop, I think we've got some issues with just being able to clean this thing up and make it smooth and fluid. But that being said, what is happening downfield? What what are these? What what if we can't tell what the hell this route is? Like that, these to me, <laughs> this is not a route. If especially if we're only gonna get two guys out, so we gotta have winners. We got to have runaways. We got to have multiple options. We can't have things that get smothered. And now and we'll talk about the pass pro as well, but that that's just, a, you know, that's not good enough. So the routes, you know, you be the judge. What the hell route is this at the bottom? Post, you know, corner in, corner dig, post. Well, who, who's he supposed to throw the ball to? Where, where do you want him to go with the ball? 
even if it was a perfect pocket, perfect pass protection. Now, pass pro wise here, I've always, you know, if you watch the right tackle right here, he's making the call. They're going full slide to the left. He's one on one with that four eye. You know, someone who's coached offensive line can tell you that, in my opinion, on a full slide setup, this is the hardest block. So the front side is the hardest block if you've got someone right there where you're like dealing with someone hard in this gap. He's got this much space. You got to really be able to cover this thing, slam the door, and not get beat either way. That being said, can we get some help here? So when we come off here, if we see color flash, so right here, he's going to bull, 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 and flash color right here. Running back, you got to eat that. You got to stick your face in the fan and eat that. You can't give us like a little chip thinking you're going to get out in the check down, then friendly fire the tight end, and then get well, that, that doesn't help anybody. This is this is nowhere near good enough. Holy moly. Okay. It can be all of those things. We got to sort this out. My goodness. Let's go. Watch the back. You got to eat that dog. You got to stick your face right in his ribs. So not, not only do you screw the right tackle, you snake the tight end. Disaster. Next one here. Second and 24, right after the sack. To me, the ball should go to the tight end. One, two, three, boom. That's open. It's open in the league. So, yeah, he shows some athleticism. I shot, I thought, I mean, I think he is a good athlete. He showed he's a good athlete, but the ball goes to the tight end. He's looking at him. We don't need to know the read. His eyes are there. Throw it. Now, why does it not go to the tight end? Well, he just took a tough sack. Okay, you got to be able to flush it and come right back. But watch his feet. His feet are kind of like, they're all over the place. They're they're borderline unsettled. Okay, so I'll pause this thing at the top of the drop. I'm going to call this a stick by the tight end. Boom. Right there. The, that's open in the NFL. You put that on the eight. He spins to his left. Great. Okay, now the thing about the footwork here is just watch his feet. I'll try to count it out. Left foot, right foot. Okay, if you're going to do quick game like this, left foot, right foot, that's it. So left foot. Right foot, all your cleats in the ground. Not another step, another step. You know, now now we're taking like gun three step to throw a essentially a quick game hitch or pivot. That's why it, that's why he doesn't make it. So the footwork is not tethered to the route, is what I'm trying to say. Short route, short drop. Okay, nice athleticism, good spin out, good decision. Go get a positive yardage. Okay, but play the play like it's designed to be played. Throw it to the tight end. Boom, he's there. If it's muddy, you don't see it, great. This is a, a decent result, but it's not the clean result. Next one, disaster, interception. So, a few things here. Obviously, get it to the check down, Captain Obvious. Yeah, I think that this is, you know, kind of getting New England a little bit on defense. I think I was watching the broadcast during this one, and they called it quarters. To me, this is not quarters. Uh, this is an iteration of either bracket or, like, combo coverage. You know, depending on how it hits your kind of understanding of ball, it's not an easy thing to sort through. So that's the first part of it. And this is a more complex look than a lot of preseason looks. And, okay, we can acknowledge the fact that I can say, and, okay, just get it to the back. So the answer is here, this. It's third and 24. You throw it right here, we punt. That's it. That's playing quarterback in the league. Okay. Now, if we're going to talk about the defense here, this to me has the sh bones, dare I say, shell of potentially quarters. But the way this thing works out as far as this guy getting way over the top, this guy looking like he's reading the release of number two. So this is number one. This is number two, number outside in. So once he comes in, I think he runs across. Once he is not a vertical threat, the eyes here of this safety and the technique allow him to essentially rob or lurk this thing. So he goes from having a responsibility to passing it off to not to staying in that kind of what I'm used to calling like robber technique. And now he can undercut whatever the hell this is supposed to be. So it's, it's about being able to make sense of, okay, what is the defense? Okay. We're playing new England. Who the hell knows? Split field coverage, middle field, open combo coverage, some sort of bracket. You know, who knows? It really doesn't matter. What you do is have to be aware of how all those routes influence the coverage.
and allow the flexibility of those safeties. So again, how this thing plays out, to me, that's not quarters up top at that top safety. And it's certainly not quarters by the safety down here to the bottom as soon as the vertical goes underneath. That's a hell of a play. And it's a learning experience. Okay, I get it. It's preseason. I personally am not going to overreact, but we will describe the film. And the, the film says unsettled. The film says things moving a little fast, not seeing things clearly. And, you know, I think a more veteran guy, just check it down, dog. It's third and 24. What are the percentages here? Play the percentages to a certain extent. Don't force it. Take it if it's there. But let's just check it down. Punting after a third down completion is okay. It's a sign everywhere in quarterback rooms across the league. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let it wash over you. Sincerely, I appreciate the support for the channel. If you're subscribed, if you get the notifications, it means a lot to me. If you haven't yet, now is the time. In addition, the Quarterback School Patreon community already mentioned it. Get over there, join, become a member, support the channel. I appreciate it. We've got hats. I'm not wearing one but we offer hats as well for a limited time. We also have quarterback school courses, by far the premium content available through the channel on all of my favorite football topics, RPOs, how to beat every coverage, tempos, pass protection. Talk a lot about pass protection in this video. You're interested in quarterback understanding of pass protection, hop over there, take the course. You will appreciate it and enjoy it. I sincerely appreciate you checking out all the resources available. Also have a bunch of free resources available, have a free quick game course, have a bunch of different tools that you can use to better understand ball. And then finally, if you haven't already, please follow me on social media. I'm probably most active on Twitter, X, whatever the hell it's called. Get over there, support the channel. I appreciate it. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, second and four. Incompletion to the back, flat, hot. Really nice job picking this protection up. Everything except the throw. So the throw is just a tick flat. I think the back doesn't help Stroud out here. It looks like he almost jumps a little early. We get a big duel by the right tackle. Watch the right tackle come down, squeeze the backer. Hot off the edge. That's correct. Pass pro in the league for most police people. Technique-wise here, first of all, I think the ball could be caught. Is he going to get a first down? No. But let's just talk through exactly what I'm talking about as far as what maybe should happen quarterback-wise. So here is the free runner. I think the offensive line does a good job of picking up the big duel. We'll call it the big duel because it's the right tackle. You get this backer coming down. He's going to squeeze that thing. Okay, so that to me is well done up front. Now, quarterback-wise, when we've got this flat as the hot and he throws a hot, that's great. Okay, two lines through it. Hot makes an H. You're welcome. Okay, now the thing I think he could do potentially to make this an easier throw is to just get a little bit of depth. You know, to me, he's a little statue-y, a little static here. If you get a little bit of depth, I feel like it's sometimes an easier angle. It's less uh, over the top. If we're going to go over, if we got this free runner going, do we want to go through him to the flat? Or can we get a little bit of depth and go around him to the flat? I personally think it's easier to go around. Some guys have unbelievable touch and can just drop it over. I just think it's worth having just a little bit more in the bag as far as throw options here. But the decision is correct. He plays it quickly. I like the base. Everything except the hookup. Okay, they got you. You're hot. You block it correctly. You decide quickly. The running back doesn't help us out by jumping early. It hits him in the hands too, y'all. But again, just, just could he get a little bit of depth? Catch, shuffle, give yourself a little bit of a better line as opposed to, to go straight over the top. Again, either way, I think the back could catch it. I don't think there's a whole lot to be mad about with C.J. Stroud. I love the fact that he sees the hot, throws the hot, everything except the hookup. Next one here, a little naked to the left. It's a nice job from Stroud getting this completion. Almost falls and stumbles. And we'll talk through design-wise here. This is not my favorite design in the world. I think it's a lot of moving parts to essentially throw a quick out on the sideline. That's just my opinion. They didn't ask me. Shocker. But I will say here there are a few things design wise offensive architecture wise that i'm just not a fan of cj stroud probably doesn't care <laughs> but i do love the fact that he's athletic enough put his hand down come out there find a completion take a shot that's pretty sweet that's really nice now how could we help cj stroud out if we're an offensive play designer so we shift the tight end right so he goes from two by two to three by one bunch 
So the decision here, as far as what we're going to do scheme wise, is a few things on these nakeds. So we're going to come out here and it doesn't really matter what we fake and come out here to the left in the league. Almost always there will be something in the flat an over from the backside and something down the field, whether it's a flag or a post. This is kind of like, in my opinion, universal naked landmarks, kind of three levels. How are we going to get there? See, now the other decision is what are we doing on the edge? Okay. So is it a hot edge, meaning off the tackle? Do we have a tight end there? You know, is there a wing? Is there a bunch? we got lots of different flank options. But if we're going to secure the edge, so if we're not going to have the threat of four verticals, so he's staying in, for my money, I want him to come down and at least engage the end. Don't come down to nowhere. So don't just close the C gap on air and allow the defensive end to run free. This, this is the type of shit that drives me bananas. So just play this thing out if you're the tight end. And again, it's not on the tight end. It's on the scheme or the call, most likely. Now, maybe he made a mental error. Who knows? But it just this is the type of shit where you watch the film and you're like, oh, we got to help our guy out. What are we doing at tight end? All to say, I don't know if it's on the tight end or it's on the coaches. It's on somebody because this just doesn't make sense to me what their tight end is doing. Blocking no one late into the flat. Regardless, nice job not going down, finding a completion, you know, a little bit of chaos all over the place, in my opinion, as far as falling all over ourselves, what we're asking the tight end to do, blocking air, nice job securing that C gap, as opposed to, you know, if, if this was me and I was making the decisions here, instead of, if this is your responsibility, great, nobody's there. So if someone were to walk up here and hit this, yeah, then we need to close the C gap. But if he's not there, then let's go out here, blunt him, secure the edge for our quarterback so that when we get out here, we don't have someone right in our face just like this. So there's not someone in our face. And then the late actually works. So everything clears. And then, you know, you, you just drift off here as kind of the naked check down. So just, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's frustrating because you want these young guys to have as much success as possible. These kind of strategic decisions to me don't make a lot of sense. Regardless, find a completion, big hit, six yards. Next one here, third and four. We got some pass pro issues. You know, we've got some design issues. We've got some perimeter skill issues. They're going to do what I'm used to calling just straight up cover one, little thief or guy in the middle, whatever you want to call it, animal. We've got no one winning. And we've got CJ Stroud essentially trying to do it himself. I think it's probably a good decision to take off and go try to get it third and four. You would love for him right here to be able to say, man, I can go get that first down and go get it. Comes close to it. Obviously want to hold on to the rock through that thing, but man, where do you want him to go with the ball? I don't know. We've got runaway options. We just don't run away. <laughs> Middlefield close, man. You know, let's play this thing out for how it looks like the play is designed. So if the if the design here looks like it's supposed to go here, one, I'm going to guess this is a choice. I think it's third and four, meaning he can go in, out. Some teams allow you to take it to the post. It looks like he just comes out and runs like a, a crummy flat, which is not there. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is probably this corner. Then we've got on the backside, we've got an over. Okay, so this over right here. First, outside leverage, middle field closed. So outside leverage, we have to be able to get inside, stair step this cat, get him off us, and win. Now, th this route has to win versus this coverage. Okay, so that's where I think the ball probably should go. And then the last part, this part is crazy. This down here is a straight up rub. So he needs to rub this cat, and then we're going to go underneath that. set. You want to set him up, come underneath that thing, and catch that thing as like the late. So, you know, if this is a choice, this is a great option. This should be a first down. This sure as hell should be a first down. Now, this corner down here at the bottom does an outstanding job of getting in this guy's back hip and tailpiping him through this thing and not getting picked. Okay, so they you can tip their hat. They're good on defense. Okay, this group looks like they know what they're doing. 
And come on, man, we got to win. We got all these runaways. We got no winners. Look at the corner down here to the bottom. This is perfect. Back hip, tailpipe, not there, right? That's not winning. But the over by the number three, that's really the guy you would love to be able to say separate and win at the top. And he just doesn't. And it's good coverage. All that being said, no one's, nothing's there. I still think, man, CJ Stroud is a good enough athlete to go get this. Nobody's spying him. You know, if he goes outside there, right here, if he goes pushes down towards the 40 down here to the bottom, he's got a chance for a big play to the receiver or run it himself. Just kind of gets a little unfortunate, picks the inside path, doesn't quite get back to it. Also, we got to go for it on fourth down there, man. From the back here, you can see, again, easy to see with a clicker. A little disappointing perimeter-wise. I don't care if this is their third, second, whatever unit in there. You know, give us some separation and some winners. Man, so close to getting him himself. So that is a wrap. CJ Stroud, first appearance. Do not overreact is the first element of this. The second element of it is acknowledging what it is. It was not great. Okay? It was unsettled. Things didn't look anywhere close to comfortable or polished. I think more worrisome than necessarily the stats or the pick, whatever, was just the disconnect from the feet and the timing with the concepts. I thought a couple of the turndowns were, were not great. I think even some of the completions were unnecessarily difficult. So that's not a great sign as much as anything. I think the interception is just learning, hey, you know, let's throw the check down and punt. That's not that hard of a lesson to learn. It happens one time, you, you got it. But the other things, the, even some of the completions, the, the footwork things going one, two, three, things not looking clean, some of the turndowns, the throwaways, those types of things are scrambles when we don't necessarily have to or we don't have winners on the perimeter. Those things to me are not great to see on film. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought. I appreciate you hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.